I printed out a whole lot of pages here concerning this theory. Something I noticed for my readers if they want to keep on reading about planet stuff, exoplanet stuff, star stuff, astronomy in general. A reinterpretation of the concept of the word protoplanet, I'll go ahead and review real quick today, is November 12th, 2016. Protoplanet size. Earth was once incredibly massive and plasmatic. It's still really massive, it's just rocks and minerals now, but compared to other stars, it's quite small. Younger stars. This foundational understanding of the true size of protoplanets is rooted in multiple principles of stellar evolution according to stellar metamorphosis. So I took a whole bunch of principles and I arranged them to where they all are um, supportive of each other, like a, like a theory. This is a theory. Number one, the energy mass dissipation, dissipation principle Protoplanets start out incredibly hot and massive and eventually cool down to their lowest energy state and lose the majority of their mass, obviously. Earth is a lot less energetic and a lot less massive than the sun. This means protoplanets are in no way rocky or metal objects that have only fractions of the masses of small moons. Inside of establishment, they want you to believe that a protoplanet is something that's really small, Something like an asteroid. It's not a protoplanet. Their concepts are very strange. You'll see why. Number two, the plasma to rock and metal principle. It says here, protoplanets start out as plasmatic material, which are stars. Then become cool, dense, and rocky metal stars. Rock and metal. Number three, foundational structure principle. This means that any object that has a differentiated interior, like the Earth, was a much larger object in its past, and places the possibility that impact remains. Many dwarf planets and planets can be classified by an internal physical understanding other than orbits or current size. Basically, it, it takes away the power of mathematicians to classify things based off of where they are in an orbit or their current size. I don't think that's a good science. Separating these objects by their size completely ignores the fact that they were once much, much larger. Earth was very, very massive in this in its early years. Jupiter was even more massive like the sun. Earth was like Jupiter, which was like the sun. It's a big it's a big uh circle of life, if you will. But to say you can classify them based off of where they are in an orbit, an orbit is random. Sure, you have it sort of arranged by their mass, so the more massive objects are going to be more towards the central regions, depending on if the Barry Center, where the Barry Center is located between other massive objects. But for the most part, the smaller ones are going to be orbiting the larger ones. So classifying based on orbits, uh, it's, that's uh, short-sighted. And number four, the accretion principle. Only objects with large surface areas and gravitational fields can accrete matter. This means protoplanet planets have to be really, really big. And that's very important because if you have if you have an object that's really tiny in outer space, it isn't gonna do shit. It would be like I don't know, shooting a bullet into the into the air. It's not gonna hit anything, it's just gonna straight through the air because space is mostly vacuum there's nothing there so to say this tiny little thing can unrealistically smash into another tiny thing and then create an earth-sized object no the, the the likelihood of that happening is essentially zero you got to think of it in terms of if you're gonna bring matter together in outer space you have to have a really big object. It has to have a huge gravitational field and surface area, or else it's not gonna it's not gonna grab any material to collect into its center. It, you need you need a huge gravitational field to create matter. It it just doesn't oh well you have all these 
uh, separate objects by the billions, and all of a sudden they move towards the center by some magical force. No, it doesn't work because you have to have the gravitational field there to begin with, or else they don't know where to go. They're just going to be floating like a big cloud. That's what an asteroid field is. Asteroid fields don't self-assemble. That's ridiculous. That's why I put number four, the accretion principle. You have to have something with a huge gravitational field and a huge surface area to grab material as it moves through outer space. If you have a little tiny rock, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to fly by whatever it is it's supposed to supposed to have accreted with and even if it does chance hit another object it's going to smash apart it's going to make even smaller stones and pieces of metal but that's protoplanet size when you read these articles uh and you see the word protoplanet know for a fact that these astronomers have no clue what they're talking about a protoplanet is something that's huge and you see protoplanets at night when there are no clouds in the sky. They're, they're called stars for some reason. That's those young. Those are young planets. They're really, really hot, and they're really big. And over time, they lose their atmosphere and they shrink and they leave all the material that had accreted over in its interior. And we're standing on one of one of those remains. But yeah, it's proton planets are huge. They're not these tiny little things. Uh, that's another thing where establishment has it, you know, wrong. Obviously. Uh, Alright, I think I made this talk long enough. Later, y'all.